Hello, and welcome to our Cisco DNA Center training series. My name is Doug Nguyen, and I'm a technical marketing engineer working on Cisco DNA Center. Cisco DNA Center brings innovation and simplicity to managing your networks, and is Cisco's premier network management product for deploying, maintaining, and troubleshooting your networks at scale. In this video, I will give an overview of how to navigate Cisco DNA Center wireless assurance. I will walk through the wireless assurance dashboards, issues and events, and our 360 pages. I will also show a couple of useful tools, which are Wi-Fi 6 readiness and 3D maps. This video assumes that your Cisco DNA Center and wireless infrastructure has been deployed and is operational. If you have not done so, please look at the video on how to get started with Cisco DNA Center wireless assurance to help you get started. The link to that video is provided below in the description. To begin, Let's log into the DNA Center UI and go to the main menu. Note that all the assurance related items are grouped together under the assurance section. A good place to start understanding your wireless network health is the overall health dashboard. On this dashboard, you can get a quick glimpse of the health of your entire network. As with all the DNA Center dashboards, there's the option to narrow the location down from the default global view to a specific site or building to focus the scope. Maybe you are only interested in examining a specific building. Similarly, the time range can also be changed to a more specific time window. You can get a seven day historic view to see trends or zoom down to a three hour block that covers a particular incidents. If a per site breakdown is desired, click the three dots and select site details. The view is separated to show the health of each individual site. An option for map view is also available to give a graphical view. From this view, we can quickly see if the issue is isolated to a specific site or is more global. For example, here we see that the issue is localized to a single location. Scrolling down further on the page, we can quickly see the overall health of all network devices. Their health is color coded based on severity for easy recognition and prioritization of issues. It can be seen that the AP's health are in red. Mouse over the AP and we see that five of the APs are in poor health. Knowing this, we can start our investigation there. If we look to the right, we can also see the client health on this dashboard. Despite the AP's poor health, the wireless clients are doing well and are healthy. Scrolling to the next section, is the network services. Here we can see the health of services that are important for wireless operations such as AAA or DHCP. This allows us to quickly understand if there are any network service issues such as the AAA server is not responding or is slow to respond or if the DHCP scope has been exhausted. Note that there are no AAA data as this lab setup is not using AAA for authentication. On the bottom we see the list of top issues seen by the network that are ranked based on priority so that the admin can prioritize. It looks like there are only two issues and both appear to be related to wireless. We see poor RF and high radio utilization. If we click on one of these, we see that the issue is affecting three different buildings and four APs. If we continue to drill down, we see more details of that floor. Note that one client is affected. There's a floor map showing the AP placement and their Wi-Fi coverage. The top two APs with the highest interference are listed. To get a more in-depth view of the AP, we can click on the AP to launch device 360. We won't do that for now as there's more to see on this page. Continuing down the page, we are provided with useful comparative metrics of the two APs relative to threshold values. Here you can see how noise may be affecting our Wi-Fi. We see that SNR is close to the threshold value and spikes over on occasions. Not great, but not severe. We can also see that interference with other sources is clearly above the threshold, and that is a problem. Channel utilization is not too bad, and is hovering at about 50%. There are additional details on impact, troubleshooting, and suggested actions. Click on the Suggested Action tab. Here we can see some suggestions on how to address the issue. Since there are issues with the AP, let's go to the Network Health Dashboard. On the top, there's a graph that shows the percentage of healthy devices over time. 
Scroll down to the Network Devices section to get a more granular view of the network devices. Mouse over the bar, we can see that there are six AP that are fair and three that are in poor health. Also shown are the reasons for the poor health scores. The latest tab shows the data for the last 10 minutes. When we click on trend, we see the data for our selected time interval. In the trend view, we can see that the issue has been persistent and continuous. A little bit further down the page are some important KPIs for wireless. The first chart shows the stability of the APs in terms of going up or down due to problems such as connectivity or if they're being accidentally unplugged. The middle chart shows the AP with the highest number of clients. This can help point to issues with AP density. The chart to the far right shows the AP with the highest level of interference. Not surprisingly, there are high interference with the 2.4 GHz band. When selecting the 5 GHz, it looks much better, while the 6 GHz band see almost no interference. In the next section of the dashboard are the network devices. Here we can filter based on health and device type, making it easy to zero in on those problem devices. Let's filter an AP with poor health. We are shown a list of problem APs. Let's select one of the AP to investigate. This opens Device 360's page and gives us a focused view of the AP. The top graph shows the AP's health over time. When mousing over the graph, we can see additional details and events. In the Issues section, we can see a list of issues for this AP. The physical neighbor topology gives us a view of how the AP is connected to the network and to the WLC. This allows us to see if the issue is further up in the network or down in the RF. Clicking on the Clients icon shows all the clients that are connected to the AP. If desired, a client can be selected to drill down with Client360. For now, let's scroll further down the page. In the Detail Information section, there are lots of important information on the AP. The Device tab shows AP information and how the AP is doing for memory and CPU usage. On the bottom, the bar shows the stability of the AP connectivity to the WLC. We can see that there are no breaks in the connectivity. Selecting the RF tab gives an in-depth look into the RF world from the AP's perspective. There is an option to select the 2.4 or the 5 GHz radio. Let's pick the 5 GHz radio. This page has a list of charts that help us to understand the health of the RF environment. Here we can see channel utilization, traffic utilization, noise, air quality, TX power, interference, retries, and channel information. The bottom chart shows wireless latency and efficiency. The radio operational state shows that the radio has been stable. Continuing down, we get to the neighbors and rogues. There are filters to select band and type. Use the RSSI slider to expand how far out from the AP to examine. We can see a list of neighbors and rogues. There's also a graphical representation of the data on the bottom. Here we can see that we are sharing our radio channel with another AP and a couple of rogues. Besides visibility to the RF health, there's visibility to the health of the AP's ethernet connection. On this tab, we can see if there are congestions or errors on the Ethernet. Lastly, there's a tab for PoE details with a chart showing power consumption versus allocated power. Let's move back to the main page and go to the Client Health dashboard to zoom into the clients. The top graph shows client health over time. It can be seen that the health of the wireless clients are pretty good, mostly at 100%. This next section shows the number of wireless clients, their onboarding status, and connectivity health. We don't see any issues here. Additional dashlets show the client's onboard time, RSSI, and SNR for the clients. These values look good and are well above the threshold. The client roam times are useful for understanding Wi-Fi mobility health. Since the clients in this demo are stationary in a lab, this data is not available. The next dashlet shows the total number of clients and its distribution between the SSIDs. And the last dashlet is for wired clients and we can skip since we're looking at wireless. The next section shows all clients and has filters to allow you to zoom in to specific device or devices that has poor health. Additional buttons with common issues can be applied to focus the search. Let's select a device in the list to launch Client360. The timeline at the top shows the health of the client and events. 
we see a solid healthy line for the selected time interval. Further down on the page is the issues section. There are no issues for this client. In the onboarding section, we can see the connectivity status of the client from the AP and ultimately terminating on the WLC. The event section would be useful if we were to track or correlate specific events. There is a path trace that can be used for troubleshooting connectivity. The application experience section is useful for debugging application specific issues. Expanding the section shows the information on application performance. Here we would be able to see if a wireless client is having issues with MS Teams, but it's otherwise okay. For example, we would be able to see that MS Team performance is poor in terms of packet loss or latency. The detailed information section gives information on the client and connectivity health from the perspective of the client. The connectivity tab shows how well the client is sending and receiving data as well as data rates and retries. The RF tab shows how well we see the client's signal from the APs in terms of RSSI and SNR. The tab on Intel Connectivity Analytics shows RF information that the client sends to us, allowing us to understand how the client sees the wireless world. Next, I will walk through a few useful tools that are available for wireless assurance. One of the tools is Wi-Fi 6 readiness. This tool gives a picture of where the network stands in terms of Wi-Fi 6 readiness and deployment, as well as helping to understand the benefits of Wi-Fi 6. The first chart shows client readiness. Here we can see all clients are Wi-Fi 6 ready. However, only 8% are connected as Wi-Fi 6. The next chart shows AP readiness. We can see that there are still some APs that are not yet Wi-Fi 6 capable. This info transfers to the next chart of protocols. Here we can see that there is a subset of APs that are still providing 11AC. By selecting trend, the progress of a deployment slash migration to Wi-Fi 6 can be tracked. And the last two widgets shows the performance difference between the different technology in terms of efficiency and latency. This is useful to understand the improvements as users are migrated to Wi-Fi 6. Another useful tool to show is 3D maps. Navigate from your network hierarchy to a floor plan. Once on the floor plan, click on 3D to see a 3D map of your floor. I will change the heat map option to make it easier to see. This 3D map shows how well a site is covered for Wi-Fi and where the coverage gaps are. You can use a pin drop view to understand the coverage at any point by dropping that pin to the location. Or with the person option, you can get a view of the RF from the perspective of a person at the site. This person can be moved around the floor as if doing a site survey without the need to send an actual person. This ends the video on navigating wireless assurance. Hope you found the content useful. If you have not done so, check out these additional resources and videos on Cisco DNA Center in the description link below. Thank you for watching.